give an actual give a round of applause to our previous speakers. Thank you, Edward. Thank you, DM Seth George. Thank you, Royalty, for that stable word. Yes, that sir. Was, like, truly, truly beautiful. Um, as my presentation pulls up, I just want to like thank you all for like coming out on this Monday evening. Y'all can be anywhere. I know finals are approaching, so I uh, definitely appreciate y'all, your power, your presence. But I'm gonna just you know quickly go through my name right quick. So my name is Oluwase Olalaya. Uh, I go by Olu. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so appreciate you, Josiah. We were working on it for you know typically earlier, but I'm, got, I'm glad you got it, brother. Yeah. Um, so, hey everyone, as mentioned before, my name is Oluwaseyi Olaleya. Uh, I go by Olu. My friends and family call me Olu. So I welcome and invite you all this evening to call me Olu. Uh, and welcome to Organic Harvest Digital, where our motto is where creative people matter. So, I was born and raised in Lagos, Nigeria. Growing up in Lagos, Nigeria, I experienced energy insecurity, so the Wi-Fi, internet, satellite radio, electricity that we received was all public utility from the government. So imagine trying to like give barely enough power to like five million people in a small area. It's not really feasible. And as a result, there was common blackouts. Uh, we had a lot of diesel generators like polluting the air, oil everywhere. It was not necessarily like the best environmental scene ever. Growing up in Nigeria, I also experienced water insecurity. We had a natural well that supported the entire community. And that well was barely adequately stuck to like feed and manage that entire community. So we had to walk miles to the nearest well just to grab water. And growing up in Nigeria, I also experienced food security. So there, they say it's recommended you get 4,000 calories a day. For me, that was a daydream. Growing up experiencing hunger, my stomach was always touching my back, always wondering where the next meal was gonna come from. It just gives you so much anxiety and thought. How do I go about, what's the next step? It just runs rampant in your mind. But fast forward to the age of five, we were lucky enough to receive citizenship here in America and we immigrated to the South Shore neighborhood. And for me, as a young child, I'm super excited. You know, the first time I saw snow, I'm like, is that rice in the sky? What's going on, <laughs> yeah. right? So I'm in a whole different world away. But yet, food insecurity and community hunger was something I still experienced. These early experiences for sure shaped and ignited my passion for farming, agriculture, community, and most important, sustainability. As we look around, when we think of food security, we see a lot of the signals that show it's here and it's a major problem that we need to be serious about. People and communities are hungry. Rural and American communities have limited access to fresh, affordable leafy produce. That's right. When we think of the issue of food access and food security, yes, it is an issue of access but it's also an issue of affordability. This past, COVID, this past COVID-19 pandemic, we had more people displaced back into hunger than the Great Depression. And not only that, there are currently more than 44 million Americans. So imagine young children, young teen adults, college students, the elderly, who are trapped in hunger. The lack of fresh produce has led to higher rates of diabetes, heart disease, and other serious health issues. In 2021, there was a common wolf study research done where it ranked all developed nations, all 11 developed nations, and the US was ranked dead last when it came to the issues of health equity, health access, and change behavior. That's crazy. And lastly, Climate change and the need for food by 2050 are academic. A few years ago in 2015, and this is like major news, so many countries came together and they decided to sign this one document called the Paris Agreement. 
And in essence, that document said, we're gonna try our best to be climate neutral by the turn of the century. So by 2050, we're gonna be in a position where we are taking away more CO2 than we're throwing out there. But for me, this makes no sense. And I say that because when we think about energy, specific calories, which are the food version of energy, if we have a goal to be energy secure by 2050, we're effectively setting a food goal by 2050. And we know by the turn of the century, there are gonna be more people on this planet than we've ever had. So we're gonna to have to find a way to feed more people than we've ever done in our history of mankind. Here at OHD, we are the new agrotech farmers. We are pioneering solutions in food hardware and food data that are transforming the way we feed people. Remember our motto, we're feeding people matter. So I just wanna quickly give y'all a quick illustration of what we are building. So this right here is our hyper-local food, water, and energy system. And for me, I'm a hardware guy, so I'm gonna, of course, start with the hardware, right? So we have and are designing a plug and play system, which means that regardless if you are in a rural or urban community, this system can be placed here and be your grocery store, right? Now you have access to fresh premium leafy greens, two blocks away. And one thing that's also cool is that we have a carbon capture and utilization. So what does that mean? We're basically capturing local CO2 and we're not only using that to make sure you're having the most premium, edible, nutritious leafy green out there, but we are also fighting climate change by cleaning your air. It's very much possible. We have green technology, solar panel, so we are electrifying urban and rural communities, making them energy secure. And lastly, we have a 